ಭೂರಭುವಸ್ವತತ್ಸರಿತುರ್ವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಪ್ರಭುದೇವ ಧೀಮಹೀ ಧೀಯೋ ಯೋ ನಃ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಐ ಎಂ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾ ಅವತಾರ ಬಾಬಾಜೀಸ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮಹಾ ಅವತಾರ ಬಾಬಾಜಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಫ್ಟ್ ದ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲಿಟಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಫೋರ್ ಗೋಟನ್ ದೇರ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಇಂಡಲ್ಜ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಲಿ ಅಫೇರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲಿಸಮ್ so this is this does not augur well for the human beings on the planet earth so now i start the video about the teachings of maha avatar baba in the kumaun foot hills of the indian himalayas that lies in the uttarakhand state of india birth place or home of many of india's great saints of the past and present there lived sri hara khan wale baba see himalayas is known as dev bhumi the land of gods to those who asked hara khan baba sometimes acknowledged that he is the shiva maha avatar baba ji so he is incarnate of lord shiva non to hundreds of thousands in the world through pramhansa yogananda's autobiography of a yogi a maha avatar is a human manifestation of god not born of woman Sri Baba Ji, Sri is a title of respect. Baba is a term used for a renunciate or saint or a holy father. Appeared in June 1970 in a cave that has been holy for thousands of years at the foot of Kumau Mountain, Kumau Mount Kailas, across the sacred river Gautama Ganga from a remote village called Hara Khan in the Nainital district of Uttar Pradesh. He had no known parents or family. He appeared as a youth of 18 or so, yet he displayed great wisdom and power, divine powers from the start. Some Hara Khan villagers saw him as an old man with a long white beard, others as a young man with a long beard. other judge a beautiful young man with a no beard two men spoke to him at the same time one saw an old man with a beard the other saw a young man with no beard he was seen in different places at the same time he knew the scriptures and could quote them in sanskrit as well as in hindi yet there is no evidence of his having been educated he ate almost nothing for month months on and two or three years yet his energy was boundless late in september 1970 he walked to the top of mount kalas with a small group of men seated himself yogi fashion at the small old temple there and sat for 40 five days without leaving his seat meditating much of the time talking occasionally preparing and blessing fruits and vegetables to give to others and starting to teach the message he brought to the world hundreds of people came in october to celebrate the nine day religious festival of navratri with him at the top of mount kalas his coming has been foretold both by ancient scriptures and the preaching and prophesying 
of a 20th century Indian saint called Mahend Mahendra Baba or Mahendra Maharaj. As a child, Mahendra Baba was healed by a vision of Babaji and the Divine Mother. He saw Babaji again on an early birthday when Babaji gave him sweets. As a boy just out of high school, Mahendra Baba met Babaji in one of his previous human forms and was taught yogic knowledge by Babaji for six days and nights. When Babaji left him, Mahendra Baba did not know who he was or where to find him again. After completing his Master of Arts degree in philosophy, Mahendra Baba renounced the world and went searching for this guru. Walking through the Himalayas in India, Nepal, Tibet and China, he then spent years at temples in the Indian states of Gujarat and Uttar Pradesh and developed a reputation as a saint. Only after 20 years of more searching and waiting was he led back to the Kumau Hills where Babaji appeared to him again in a locked room in a remote mountain ashram. After this appearance of Babaji in the flesh, Mahendra Baba at Babaji's instructions began a mission of preparing for Sri Babaji return to the world in human form. For many years he went around India preaching that Babaji would return to transform the world by changing the hearts and minds of men. He described what Babaji would look like, including the scars on his right leg and left arm. He said that Baba G would come in 1970. Mahendra Baba restored old ashrams and temples, built new ones and prepared the worship service now used by Sri Baba devotees. Mahendra Maharaj told his followers that Sri Baba Ji had been a human manifestation of God since man first learned about religion. Baba Ji has taught gurus and other religious teachers throughout history always trying to turn man towards God and spiritual values. Through the ages, he has appeared to teach people manifesting a body for each appearance rather than coming by human birth. Yogan, Yogananda wrote of his and other people's experiences with this immortal Baba in the 19th and early 20th century. There are books in Hindi written about previous manifestation of Hera Khan Baba which lasted about from about 1800 to 1922. Around the year 1800 he appeared to village not far from Hera Khan out of a ball of light and in 1922, before a handful of followers, he disappeared into a ball of light. There are many recorded miracles, healing people, restoring the dead to life, feeling multitudes form a small portion of food, changing his form, being in two or more places at one time, feeding a sacred fire with water when he clarified butter was not available. But mostly people flocked to him because they experienced him as a divine, wise, loving being far above the human level, mountain villagers, educated and uneducated, westerners, English bureaucrats and soldiers, Indian intelligentsia, rich and poor people of all religions came to him. There are still people in Hera Khan and uh, elsewhere in India who remember the old Hera Khan Baba and experienced this manifestation as the same being. There are evidences of yet earlier manifestations. Tibetan monks came to Sri Babaji in 1972 and hailed him as Lamba Baba who had lived in Tibet about 500 years ago. There are stories of his appearance in Nepal as well as in India and Tibet. On two or three occasions, 
Baba said he was one of the teachers of Jesus Christ. Most of Sri Babaji's followers experience and worship him as a true, ageless manifestation of God. The big and little miracles he performed daily in the lives of his followers, his reading and respond, responding to their thoughts before they were uttered, his heeding, his guidance, his teachings are at level beyond even advanced human ability. The dramatic external miracles were infrequent. Most of his miracles occurred in the minds, hearts, and lives of his followers. Miracles of understanding, guidance, teaching, and support when, where, and as needed. Sri Babaji said that mankind, mankind is Mankind is in great danger during the period of Kali Yuga, the age of the rise of materialism and the decline of spiritual life. He foretold of widespread physical destruction and change in death in this decade. He said that those who truly worship God in any form of the ways man knows him and repeat his name and live in harmony with the universe will be saved and that a new humanitarian society of people who are focused on God will be formed in order to focus people's mind on God. Babaji taught people to repeat the ancient many mantra Om Namah Shiva. It is a Sanskrit phrase which means something like I surrender to bow to take refuge in God. Repetition of Om Namah Shivaya is a pathway to unity with the Supreme God. The name of God used in this mantra is Lord Shiva, who is a Hindu conception of the ones of Supreme God. This mantra has been used for millennia and taught by saints and gurus in India and the West. Constant repetition of a mantra. The repetition is called Japa focuses the mind on God, opens one's heart on and God to mind to God, and stops or reduces the inherent tendency of one's mind to constantly plan, worry, daydream, or otherwise prattle away in really useless activity. The main purpose of Sri Babaji's coming in a human manifestation at this time was to reform the hearts and minds of men. He came to remove confusion and evil from mind, <clears throat> evil from mankind. Babaji once said, the mind can be purified only by Japa. This is the only medicine for the disease of mind. While your mind and heart are impure, how can God live in your heart? The water to clean your heart is the name of God. So teach everyone to repeat the name of God everywhere. The mind that is generally focused on God's name responds when the need arises spontaneously to perform its required functions quickly easily and well. Babaji emphasized Om Namah Shivaya but also gave other mantras on occasion. The essence of his instruction is repeat God's name. Sri Babaji said that when the great destruction comes to the world, those who believe in and worship God sincerely and especially those who repeat his names will be saved by the power of the mantra. God's names are more powerful than a thousand atomic and hydrogen bombs. Although Sri Babaji lived in a Hindu culture and was worshipped through Hindu rituals daily, he was not attached to any particular religion. He stated that all religions can lead the sincere devotee to God. At Hera Khan, Sri Babaji was worshipped by Hindus. Christians, Buddhists, Jews, Sikhs, Muslims, even atheists found themselves bowing to him. He often reminded his followers that all mankind is one family, the family of God, 
for those who asked about religion he answered follow the religion that is in your heart he however said at many times that he had come to re-establish the principle of sanatana dharma the eternal religion which was ageless and from which all other religions have taken their roots if even before his reappearance in 1970 babaji taught mahendra maharaj to preach that all lovers of god should lead lives based on truth simplicity and love this he said is the essence of all religions it is very difficult to nurture hatred greed anger lust jealousy and selfishness and the violence they breed when a person tries hard to live in truth sim- simply and lovingly with all to all who came to see him he told over o- over and over that karma yoga on selfish work dedicated to god is the best easiest most rewarding quickest way to god in this chaotic confused era of change at his ashram in hara khan work morning and afternoon is a vital part of the daily schedule there is time for meditation in the early morning after a bath in the river but baba ji insisted on several hours of karma yoga daily during which time one is expected to work with the constant repetition of a mantra to follow and demonstrate the path of truth simplicity and love is man's supreme duty and the higher yoga diligent work is a quality of this path for laziness is death on earth only by work can one claim victory over karma all must strive to do their duty in the best way possible and not wander from that duty service to humanity is the first duty during these times in humanity and laziness have increased so it is important that your work hard and uh, it is important that you work hard and not lose heart be brave be industrious work hard and have courage all those who baba ji called many westerners to him by dreams visions pamphlets or simply through one friend telling another about him he did not seek to establish a great personal following his small ashram four miles away winding river bed from the end of the nearest country road could not accommodate the thousands who have flocked to other sands and groves but though he had made no general call for people to come to see him he did want all the world to hear his message during the first year or two after his appearance ri baba ji hardly spoke at all in public although he engaged in easy conversation with people for the last 8 or 10 years of his mission it was only in the last 5 years of his mission that he began to give little instructive talks to his devotees very infrequently at first then more often the talks came mostly after the evening worship service when his devotees sat around baba ji singing haimanj kirtan and enjoying the powerful uplift of his presence baba ji would stop the singing and speak his talks were made in hindi so when he wanted foreign devotees to hear the message baba ji called on some bilingual devotees to translate the translators were not professional translator some devotees would take down the translation as it was given and the next day the translator and the transcriber tried to recreate baba's speeches in english in february 1983 baba ji gave permission to tape record the speeches so the speeches from then on are fuller and more accurately translated although 
द स्पीच इज विच दिस बुक कंटेंट आर नॉट परफेक्ट लिटरल ट्रांसलेशन दे डू कैच द फ्लेवर ऑफ बाबा जी स्पीच इज एंड दे मस्ट प्रेजेंट हीज मैसेज एडिकुएटली बिकॉज ही अप्रूव दिस पब्लिकेशन द बुक ऑल्सो कंटेंट ए फ्यू स्पीच इज मेड इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ श्री बाबा जी एंड एट हीज रिक्वेस्ट by sri vishnu dat shastri and amar singh yadav shastri ji is a scholar of the vedas the earliest hindu scriptures a man whom baba ji called the purest man on earth and baba ji himself said that he inspired shastri ji to speak for him there are also a few speeches made by governor of the indian state of uttar pradesh and the kumaon commissioner a senior administrative officer of the state in the presence of sri baba ji these talks speak for themselves however the interpretation and understanding of sri baba ji's words may not be easy as a reader may first assume those who have worked for baba ji at hera khan and elsewhere have come to realize something of the depth and subtlety of all the baba ji's words and actions his words and acts were understood at different levels as a person experienced and later recalled them the same word and acts touch different people in different ways beyond saying this it is not possible to assist the reader in understanding sri baba ji's message except perhaps to note that the old methods of thought are not going to serve in the new world world any better than the old patterns of social action sri baba ji speeches reflected his consciousness of himself as a manifestation of god he often called himself in these talks sri mahaprabhu ji a hindi expression for the supreme master for those who know him as a manifestation incarnation of god these speeches present a consistent powerful inspiring message from a loving god who seeks to guide his devotees through a time of chaos and destruction into a new promised land a society a society based on high spiritual and moral values others have used some of these speeches to conclude and argue that sri baba ji was just another scheming baba with a plan to seek political power and material wealth in the age old tradition of gurus from gurus the supreme guru sri baba ji spoke the truth and leaves it up to the hearer to reader to make of it what he or she will sri baba ji did not require people to see or worship him as a manifestation of god in order to come to him and he benefited by him he himself said of his his human form this is this body is nothing it is her only here only to serve people sri baba ji left his mortal body on saint valentine day february 14 1984 early in his mission he had told two or three devotees that he would leave his body in 80, 1984 before he came he told mahendra maharaj that he would come to give message to mankind he came he lived his message he spoke his message his message was published and having completed this mission he left as the governor of uttar pradesh the honorable cpn singh remarked there is no difference between his speech and his action this book contains his spoken message the concept is in it are not new you can find similar teachings in the old hindu scriptures the bible the quran the guru granth sahib zoroastrian scriptures but in a world which is focused almost entirely on material values and goals this message with its strong humanistic and spiritual emphasis is a message of revolution baba ji frequently warned that a revolution mahakranti is coming he told what he would be like and how to survive on the 13th of february 1984 he told some visitor the mahakranti must come because everyone thinks in terms of i and my and everyone wants to be 
big and no one wants to be small. The revolution that he came to inspire is a revolution of thinking and feeling of mind and heart, but he indicated that it could not take place without a physical material revolution that would destroy the old society and patrons thought. He came to show mankind how to live to serve man on the highest level. Let him serve you. So, the main purpose of Babaji's arrival in the human form was to uplift the spiritual level of human beings. So, I end the video here. Thank you for listening this listening and watching this video please comment like and share the video and subscribe my channel thank you